So the first bonus, that little bonus rather, I'd like to show off is Time Attack. Time Attack is a fun little mode where you take on the bosses with no normal levels and try and see how fast you can pull it off. Um, it's about skill, it's about you know practice, it's sort of a game into itself because you know it's doesn't have to follow the normal rules. It's you against the bosses, and that is a very different game. You also get a healing item that you get restored every time you use it, and at least every once per battle. As you can see, you can actually destroy Veligunder's arms, and doing so makes him wide open. If you had more MP, he'd already be dead. Or if you had the Hawk Idol, since I'm still learning how to aim with this thing. But Veligunder is, of course, easy, and you can see I'm actually not as bad as I made it myself look before. Once again, we'll be squaring off with Timoth, or Tiamoth, Tiamoth, and just want to make sure we don't rush those charge fireballs so they hit thin air. Yeah! Nor do we want to run into his ice. And my previous mention about trying not to waste it. And as you can see, they actually still have the... I found it last time. The treasure chest is still up there even during the boss rush. Here's Galaldi. You can trick him into shooting his tongue out faster if you let him actually get some damage dealt to you. But I don't really like that strategy. Because I haven't been able to figure it out. And there's the tongue reaching out but eventually it'll always swirl back around, and that's when you try and get in as much as you can get. As you can see, I'm doing a lot better this time, so I don't always suck. Just most of the time. Real trick is just not letting the tongue find some way to corner you during this part of the process, because it can. He can sort of team up with his own tongue and trap you in a nasty spot in the corner. Yeah, I almost got to kill him before he could shoot out any fire enemies. Bah! Come on, Jin. Out of the way. You're just making this slightly harder on me. And there's Galaldi. Nice and dead for us. Now we move on to the first of the Solomon Shrine bosses, Durigar. Two will be much easier with the analog stick, because the analog stick is much better for dodging bullet hell. At least it is for me. I think Toho is better with a keyboard, but this game... much better with an analog stick. Maybe the aiming is harder for me, but... Well, I have some auto-aim, so that sort of takes some of the stress away. As you can see, I'm utterly destroying him. Only problem is when a couple times in practice for this, I've gotten caught underneath him. But that's Durigar. And here's Zava, with her Zavas. that if I do even half as good as I did last time, shouldn't pose me nearly the threat she used to. I don't know why I used to have such a hard time with her. Because I think this time through, I had most of my trouble with Timulf in the actual Let's Play, which is weird because he's, as you can see, he's not hard for me. Part of what I think I was forgetting is that a charge shot to start off, yes, but then rapid fire. Rapid fire is very useful in most games where you can rapid fire. There's actually a mode that makes you rapid fire easier, but I prefer this. It gives me a little bit more control. I like feeling sort of like how mechanical slot machines, even though in the end they're still just as random, or you know, not random. Um, I still enjoy the feeling, even though I don't really play the slots, I just mean that if I had the chance of doing a mechanical or... Eh, 
pressing a button or pulling a lever. I prefer pulling the lever, even if it just activates a mechanical device. Or rather, an uh, electronic device. As you can see, I haven't even used my healing item yet, and I may not even need to. Which would be absolutely awesome. And there's Zaba. Nice and fried. And this will seal your magic. Yeah. Taking away any and all magic for this battle, which is fine. Not really a problem. Because this is not a battle of magic, Dals. Oh, he's also called Duels in some... In, I think, actually, Falcom's official translations. Um, the, or their romanizations. Because they do romanize things, even if they don't always translate them. And, honestly, they usually just look like typos to me. And... Alright, yeah, this is definitely not going to be like a boss rush I'm proud of. But as long as I can kill everyone, I'll be proud of it because I'll have finished it. You're already pretty low. Die for me, please. I might actually make it a point of trying to get a higher score and showing that off, too. Because I've never really been concerned with it. But, then again... Yeah. I have to reboot my computer to record these. It's kind of annoying. Now we have the final battle. Against Darm. We have shield magic for this, thankfully as the game's not completely cruel, but I will have to employ a little bit more strategy after my sh first shield wears off, because I don't have the elixir in this battle. So you will have to see me actually use a little bit of strategy against Darm. Not too terribly much more, but enough for it to count. And as you can see, if you pull back, you'll, you'll be able to get more hits in, because he'll draw more into the actual arena. Which makes sense. And he turns into his true form, the Black Pearl. And let's just see what we, if we can't destroy that form, too. Yeah, he's definitely going to die. I admit, he's probably one of the easier bosses, but that's okay. This, this is... The, what's sort of weird about this version is that it doesn't really show how far Falcom had come by this point. It was mostly a tribute to the way East 1 and 2 were originally made. So, there we go. 7 minutes, 99. I've definitely done a lot better. Um, as you can see, those are my best times for Velagundir, Galaldi, um, Dolls, and, Dals, and Total on this computer. Um, but I know that Songs in the Morning can do much, much better. I'm going to see if I can't convince her to actually post some of her bests on here. But um, that'll be all for this. And actually, I think besides one other little thing in East 2, the rest of the special bonuses I wanted to show off are actually from East 1. So we'll get to those shortly. So here we are, back outside of Minia. But we've never been to Minia yet. So let's just say theoretically we didn't know where it was. Julius comes out says, Hey, wait a second. Didn't your parents ever tell you that it's not safe outside? Huh? Oh, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't be talking to you like you're just some kid. You don't look familiar. Are you from Barbado? The lands outside are teeming with demons. It'd be better to stay in Minia. Huh, what a friendly little chap. Helped us find Minia, as if we needed it. And here, you'll see that as we look back to rather early in East 1, first, she has the gold pendant. If she could have hold, held on to that, well, things would have been a little bit quicker. Not really that much quicker, though. But, yeah, had to be a little bit more careful. Had to keep her close, because there's one little thing about her. One thing you can do with her is actually, if you are very careful, you get the mirror item. You can actually level her up by grinding her up against the monsters. Which is, you know, kind of cool. But, what we're really here to show off is how easy we can get her lost. Nope! Come on, Fina. Follow us. What I had mentioned earlier in an East 1 video. We just take her right over here. And... We need to get her to go in front of us over here. Ah, come on. Come on, we've done this before. Behave. 
we just push her up against this wall. Fina, it's a dead end. And she blushes. Um, Adel, it's kind of cramped back here. And as you can see now, T, B, waist, hips. Um, there's Zerfina's measurements. Let's put on the mask of eyes. Ah, uh, I'll have to load to get that. You get a different thing when that happens. So I'll have to show you that too after a little bit of a cut. And here we are once again, only we're going to...